The driving factor for a guy is to achieve goals. It's ingrained into their brains and literally takes over them and boosts their ego and makes them feel accomplished which is the first clue into using reverse psychology to get a guy to like you. If you become the prize worth fighting for, he will find it exciting to actually earn your love and your interest. And just like how we don't really feel that excited when someone gives us a gift and we already know what is inside the wrapping paper. This is how men will find you if you give it up too quick and make it too easy for him to chase you. So let's dive in deep, like and subscribe. The first thing is to boost his ego. Let's start off with some very easy psychology. You need to make him feel amazing in his own skin by simply complimenting him. Make sure it's a genuine compliment though, and you do give him many reasons and why you would admire something about him. You could say, I like how hardworking you are, it's incredibly sexy, and I appreciate you doing this for me because I know how hard you work. Be mysterious. You need to keep him guessing all about you. The more that he thinks about you, the harder he eventually falls, which is a very easy method to remember. Now, there is a method to this madness, and if you do it wrong, you can come across very cold-hearted, and eventually, it's so hard for him to figure out you at all that he just loses interest. So all you have to do is hold back a little. When us ladies get excited, we want to share everything in one second flat. We don't breathe, we carry on talking, and you will have the urge to tell this guy all about your day, all about your past, your future plans, etc. But instead, fight this urge. Reveal more about you as the time and the attraction builds. Focus on having fun and just feeling comfortable before you tell him more about your life. You can even use some cheeky ways and say, mm, you want to know more about my job? Well, how about I actually tell you what I do for a living on the next date? Play hard to get. Don't worry, it's not as manipulative as it sounds. The true and correct way to do this is to hold back a little with your affection, very similar to what I mentioned previously. It doesn't mean that you stonewall him one day and then blow up his phone with 25 missed calls the next. It means you switch it up from being super friendly one day and then the next day you are a little bit more flirty and then you interchange. Sometimes you are able to answer his phone calls quickly but then the next day you are busy watching Netflix. The concept here is playing hard to get is actually making out that it is hard to get you and so many women miss this. You are hard to get because you have lots of amazing things going on in your life. You won't settle. You can't sit and chat on your lunch break to him because you are catching up with a friend instead. You can't just drop everything for a last minute date as you already have a fully booked calendar. When you correctly play hard to get, he sees you as a high value lady that he will have to wait for until you have the time to build a connection. Don't brush things in the bedroom. There is nothing nicer than a guy who is wanting to take you to bed, right? Not only does extending the intimacy before sex build attraction to each other, but it whittles out the guys who are only after one thing. If his affection and the intimacy comes on too strong one night, counterreact it with a, oh, I think you're confusing me with a lady who has had more than six successful dates with you. You're gonna have to wait. Now a high value guy will go at your pace, so do not be afraid to pull him up and ask him to slow down. This will drive him wild as now he has a goal that he can't just easily reach and it taps in to that manly part of his brain. Let him know that you have options. Of course, this will not work if you guys have been seriously dating for six months. But if you guys are at the start of that dating phase and you are not exclusive, you are allowed to see other people. You don't directly tell him that you have a date with Simon on Thursday, but you imply that you are wanted by many by simply saying, well, I'm going out to a fancy restaurant with a friend on that night, so I can't meet you. The fact that you haven't mentioned a girl's name or said, my friend Melissa, will leave him wondering if it's actually a guy that you are going out with. And I'm not telling you to pretend that you have other options, but actually do have other options. When you know you have many options, you are less likely to settle for less than what you are worth. Ignore him to get his attention. 
I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, oh, this makes no sense. Why ignore someone if you want them to give you more attention, right? Well, weirdly, it actually works that way. And this is what reverse psychology is after all. If a guy isn't calling you like he said he would, and maybe he is choosing, for example, to spend more time with his friends, and it's kind of making you feel a little bit like, hmm, why am I being second best right now? If this happens, simply just get on with your own life. On the inside, yes, acknowledge those feelings. You are annoyed that he's going out with his friends for the second weekend in a row, and so all you have to do is make plans yourself. And you make plans for the next weekend and you tell him, hey, you can go out with your guy mates next weekend because I've made plans. Now he feels that you are still interested and he has permission to hang out with the lads and he will love it. He's probably going to be bragging to his friends saying, hey guys, fellas, I think she's the one because she's not bothered that we're playing golf this weekend and then next weekend she's not bothered either. And all you have to do is remain happy. On the following weekend after that, you do the same. Go out with your friends. And eventually, this is where the powerful thing pops in. That novelty that he has hanging out with his friends will wear off. And he will want to come back to you and do all he can to pre-book a weekend with you. Now, the same applies to him not calling you. Don't call him to tell him that you are annoyed that he's not returning your calls. Simply just get on with your life and do cool things. Forget about him. And eventually, I promise, he will come back when he notices that you have been distant. Be confidently you. Guys love confident women. It shows that they are independent, they are not needy, and they don't depend on their boyfriends to feel good. Now, your guy will admire your confidence because you can stand up for yourself. Now, this also means, well, he knows that confidence equals high value, which means you will not accept less and you will pull him up for bad behavior. And that means he has to put his best foot forwards always, otherwise he could lose you and majorly miss out. Have a life that you enjoy. Surround yourself with great people, great things, and great experiences. And only ever talk about the positives of your day. Don't have conversations and say, yeah, my day was all right, you know, same old, working, pay the bills, get back home, eat Netflix. Instead, you say, yeah, my day was great. We got so far ahead with this project at work. It's brilliant. We're going to be hitting our top targets this week. And then I got home, relaxed in the bath, and then made some amazing food and chilled and watched an awesome series on Netflix. Now, using positive words when you speak helps him to identify you as a high value, fun person. And he won't refuse to have a date with you because you are always positive and loving life. And he will, in fact, maybe feel a little bit jealous of your life and want to be more involved in it because, well, it's the FOMO. There's a fear of missing out on something that you have that he doesn't. Show him you don't need him. Remember and repeat after me, I don't need a boyfriend, I want one. A guy is never gonna complete you. You are capable of putting up your own shelves. You can cut your own lawn, you can pay your own rent, and you can cook fancy meals for yourself. A guy is an extension of your pre-existing happiness. You are not dependent on him. If you can bring up conversations with a guy that says that you have life covered, he will be impressed. Of course, a guy needs to know where he can fit into your life, and this is where you build up the flirting momentum so that he knows he is wanted. But overall, it means stop talking about how much you hate being single. I get it, you're trying to move things along with him and you do hate being single, but don't say that. You don't talk about how jealous you are of your friends who are already married and have kids. The more positive talk that you say, the more you will believe it, the more high value you become. So remember ladies, you do not need a man, you want a man. So let us know down in the comments below if you think we missed something in today's video, it would be great to read your advice. Until the next time, stay safe, be happy, and I'll see you soon. Like and subscribe.